we already did a video on this. We're going to put the 3.2 VR in it. Um, before we do the swap, we just thought it would be fun to dyno the current setup. It's an AAZ uh, diesel engine. Not expecting a whole lot here. We don't actually have a tack signal uh, for these. I don't have the IR pickup. Um, so we won't have torque, which I know a lot of the diesel guys are chasing after, but we will be able to measure horsepower. I'm expecting probably about uh, wheel horsepower. I'm going to guess 59 wheel horsepower. And my guess was around 70, but I'm starting to second, second guess that. now. <laughs> so we're going to we get it all strapped down. Dino's fired up. We're going to uh, get to it. We're probably only going to do one or two pulls here. That'll give us what we need. So it's not going to produce a whole lot of power but um, we're gonna at least see what it does before we do the, the 3.2 swap. No tire prep needed? No, Nothing. Uh, no. We're gonna, no, <laughs> no sticky needed. All right. So let's get to it. You don't think all the uh, high horsepower is gonna blow that exhaust um, hose out of it? No, I don't think uh, we're worried too much about much of anything with this engine, <laughs> to be honest. I uh, would we'll get better open the door. You're smiling. Yeah. Because it fired up. <laughs> so you said 70, eh? You think 70? No, but I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. I said 59, right? Yeah. Let's see what it does. Pretty much 80 horsepower. Yeah, crazy. Never would have expected that. But it's still boring. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna fix that problem. The power band's actually good. Uh, we again, we don't have uh, an RPM signal to give us um, an actual torque reading. But as you can see, power comes up pretty good, uh, which is pretty typical for a diesel. It's just lacking the amount of power that it makes. We might just do one more to back it. What do you so think this time? Two to make it true. I'd say 75 this time. 75. Uh, so I changed it to to show speed, so we'll have an actual graph when we're finished after this one. Um, yeah, we'll see. I, was, I don't even know what to guess now. So <laughs> if it makes it close to what it made, that's going to be impressive. still pretty much just what an eight valve would make in this yeah but i guess the fuel economy thing and the torque the torque yeah, torque would hard be to say it'd probably be if i had to guess like 130 torque or something like that maybe more it's gonna have double both of those things probably next time <laughs> Got the engine out of the caddy next up is to tear down the replacement transmission that we have for it it is an o2j um, i have the differential and the transmission set up on the bench over there i'm just going to set the camera up over my shoulder so you guys get a quick view of tearing it down and putting the diff in 
Uh, once we got that done, then obviously we're gonna uh, put the, the clutch on and the transmission on the engine and start getting that in the car. But until then, let's get this transmission torn down. Well, I have the fluid drained out of it already. There's, it's still gonna make a huge mess once I take this apart. Um, I've taken up, I've just kind of loosened up and taken off the shifter tower. That's actually from an O2A transmission. Um, so it didn't actually belong to this. It was just there to fill a hole. Um, re uh, remove the release bearing and um, I'm just going to start removing bolts and get it apart. To a small snag. Obviously, these transmissions are, are getting old now, so they come with their own problems. Uh, these pins usually just slip in here like this, and um, this one I've had it happen the odd time in the past. The pin doesn't want to come out, and it's separated uh, from this piece that holds it down. So what I'm going to do, I just cleaned it up with the grinder. I'm going to plug weld that on here. That'll get some heat into the case and give me something to be able to bite onto to try to pull that out. So going to weld that up now and see if we can get that freed up. Okay, so let's see if we can get it out now. I'm going to let that cool just a little bit longer um, before I really start tugging on it, but uh, this should work. It looks like it's coming out now. So. Minor setback. And there we have it, the differential. This is what we're replacing. Because I gotta drill the ring gear off because the ring gear stays with the gear set and uh, this ring gear has got to go on the new diff. So I got to drill out all these rivets um, and then swap over the ring gear to the new diff. So let's get that done and uh, we can start cleaning it up and start putting it back together. Okay, so I have the diff, uh, the old ring or the ring gear drilled off the old diff and bolted up to this. Loctite it, torque to spec. I have a few more things to do to clean it up and get it ready to actually reassemble, um, but I won't bore you with that. So here we go. Okay, there you have it. It's all assembled. Um, I need to pick up a O2J shifter tower as it's getting a Mark IV shifter box put in the vehicle. Um, but that's pretty much it. It's time to now put it on the engine and get it in the vehicle. All right guys, so we're gonna try to get the engine in the caddy tonight. Um, I just wanted to go over a couple things before we do that. Um, it's been a couple hours worth of work just kinda to get to this point, um, but I wanted to show you a little bit of a comparison of the small diesel engine that we took out and the 3.2 that's going in its place. Um, engine transmission's kind of ready to go. There are a few things to note with it. Um, there is a difference in the exhaust manifolds between the Audi A3 3.2s and the R32s and the Mark IVs. Uh, so that's something to definitely keep a note when you're ordering the kit. And then, um, you know, it's just been a couple hours getting the car ready to get the engine in there, removing all the shifter stuff and um, the shifter box and because it all all had linkage in there previously so now we're getting to the point where we're going getting ready to put the engine in i uh, got the harness and everything just set on top we got most of the coolant lines and stuff figured out already so now we're going to put it in okay so we had the engine in a while ago uh, but i just wanted to update you guys on 
where we kind of sit with it. A few things have kind of changed. We've added a few things um, and just kind of go over some of the requirements needed to get this engine in the car. So where things sit now, um, obviously I got the wiring. I started getting into that and pinning out everything from the stock uh, A3 3.2 harness. Uh, some things that needed to happen in regards to the engine fitment. One thing is if you do head down this road, uh, there is a smaller alternator option that Eurowise offers, I'm sure other companies offer, but the alternator is extremely close to the rad support on these things. In fact, um, we had to basically butcher apart the bracket. I think we might even have to move the engine a little bit before we could even get the alternator in there. Um, the radiator and the hose, the hoses and stuff all fit pretty good. So one thing we added um, was a set of scale uh, innovate coilovers. They come with the camper plates and we actually had these ones built specifically for having a VR in the front of it. So it's a little bit heavier spring rate. We did have to do a bit of work to get the radiator hoses all matching up to the stock heater core and stuff. Also we got the new uh, metal oil pan on in place. Uh, it fits really good actually. So the one thing you got to keep in mind with this is you do need to have the Mark V oil pump or in this case the A3 oil pump in order to run that uh, shallower metal pan. Uh, some other things are the fuel lines. So on these engines, it's a returnless fuel setup. So all I did was get a, an adapter um, to match into the stock fuel line and then I'm just running a line over and connecting back into the original fuel lines that go to the back of the car. Fuel tank's all been drained and all the lines blown out and everything like that, and new fuel filters going on. We got the Mark IV shifter box in place, um, the shifter cable, everything's all connected and in place and ready to go now. So we're getting to the point where it's just pretty much the wiring left. Um, Serpentine belt originally got the wrong one, so um, that's one small little thing. And, um, and then we're just still waiting on the exhaust to get here for it. So we should have this thing up and running very soon. And we're going to probably put it back on the dyno to see what it makes for power with the new engine. Okay, so that's gonna sum it up for this video. Uh, we're gonna have one more video on the Caddy when we get it back on the dyno. Uh, be sure, if you have any questions, ask them below. We are very, very close to hitting 1,000 subscribers, so don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video. Start again. What are the things that I needed to talk about? Okay, so that's gonna sum it up for this video. I know these are gonna be f***ing edits at the end, so... I don't know how to do this. I feel like it's weird. You have to stop. I have to stop there, because this will be 20 f***ing takes. Okay, so we have the engine... And, oh. oh, there's the head of the... Oh, the, the, chicken. Uh, the chicken that's out in the engine bay.